taken from uh, Job chapter 11 and verses uh, 13 to 18. Yet if you devote your heart to him and stretch out your hands to him, if you put away the sin that is in your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent, then free of fault, you will lift up your face and you will stand firm and without fear. You will surely forget your trouble recalling it only as waters gone by. Life will be brighter than noonday and darkness will become like morning. You will be secure because there is hope. You will look about you and take your rest in safety. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, I've got a list of things that have appeared incorrectly in church bulletins like, like this one. There's a potluck supper Sunday at five o'clock. Prayer and medication to follow. <laughs> Everything. And then uh, the scouts are saving aluminum cans, bottles and other items to be recycled. Proceeds will be used to cripple children. <laughs> the, and uh, the pastor would appreciate it if the ladies of the congregation would lend him their electric girdles for the pancake breakfast. <laughs> you know, um, we really ought to put my name on that prayer list um, because, you know, uh, you know, they asked me, would you like to assist Pastor McGee? Hmm. And then, and so I was going to be assistant pastor. And then somebody said, well, I thought I'll make him associate pastor. I thought, well, oh, I mean, what's a word mean, you know? And then all of a sudden he's in the hospital. <laughs> and here I am. And I don't, you know, and there are days, honestly, there are days when I look at this and I say, wow, I don't know. Am I adequate to, what in the world am I doing, you know? You ever been, I've been in that spot more than I care to count. And I imagine you have too, so pray for me. And I probably will ask you to hook up your electric girdles or do something stupid. <laughs> and uh, so uh, just, uh, well, you know, get along with it. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I was up in Las Vegas the other day. Somebody said to me, yeah, Ross, you've got a friend in Las Vegas and you're always going to see him. Well, we do, two friends, Don and Kathleen Brown and another friend, Dean Seth. And this sign, it's upon the screen too, but this was in his bathroom. <laughs> and uh, it caught my attention. So this week I, we went over to um, Hobby Lobby and it was on sale, 50% off. But I wanted this because I think it kind of capsulizes something that I think is really important for us. Always pray to have eyes that see the best in people, a heart that forgives the worst, a mind that forgets the bad, and a soul that never loses faith in God. You know, our scripture today, taken from Job 11, I received a devotional kind of newsletter from Rick Warren, and he shared with us in that newsletter a contemporary version of Job 11, 13 to 18, and it went like this. Surrender your heart to God, turn to him in prayer, and give up your sins, even those you do in secret, and then you won't be ashamed. You'll be confident and fearless. Your troubles will go away like water beneath a bridge, and your darkest night will be brighter than noon. Now, these are very accurate words and very accurate advice. However, the book of Job, in fact, a book written by uh, Hugh Ross, no relation, but a book's entitled Hidden Treasures in the Book of Job. He says, Zophar and friends responded in the same way many well-intentioned believers do when somebody messes up, things aren't right, they need help, and we dish out advice. And we might tell them the truth, but we might do it in a very 
holier-than-thou kind of accusative manner. Good advice, poorly stated. In fact, at the end of the book of Job, uh, God even chastises Zophar and his buddies for, uh, you know, because when people ask uh, for help, I've had a friend call me in kind of doubts and wonders. In fact, somebody encouraged his doubt and said, well, you're probably not a Christian. Huh. That was helpful. When he calls, we just simply, I remind him of the day when he committed his life to Christ. And so these words say to us, and this poster, that when you and I are in a big sweat about something, it says, well, then pray that your eyes will see the best in people and so forth. And then Rick Warren says, when you wake up every morning before your feet hit the floor, you should say, God, before I even start this day, I surrender my emotions to you. I want you to be Lord of my feelings. I want you to control my mind and my emotions. I surrender my heart to you. I want you to fill me with your love. One of the reasons for reading the Bible, memorizing the Bible, going to a prayer meeting, coming to church, is then when we are in a tough spot, the Holy Spirit can remind us of something. In fact, it would seem that the Holy Spirit can't remind us of something that we don't already, that we haven't already been exposed to. When pastor said to me uh, yesterday that he was in such pain that he couldn't pray, as I drove home and contemplated that, you know, the pastor's not supposed to tell you that he couldn't pray. <laughs> but then I remembered that in Romans 8, 26, it says we don't know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us. And in a different translation, if we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us. God knows your heart. And the Holy Spirit will pray on behalf of what is in your heart. Now, Rick Warren takes all of this and he gives three, he's, he identifies three commands and eight benefits in, in, in those several verses. One of those commands is surrender your heart to God. One of the benefits, he says, is your troubles will be like water under the bridge. But if you go to somebody who's really in trouble, and you know the tendency to say, oh, you'll be okay. It'll be like water under the bridge. You're not going to be bothered by all of this. Don't worry about it. Oh, I had a surgery like that too, you know. And, uh, well, it took me months to recover, but I did okay. Well. All of that might well be true, but not necessarily the best advice to give somebody when they're struck down and ill, difficulty and whatever. So what does it mean, surrender our heart? What does it mean, as we read this morning, to devote our heart? What does it mean? Well, first, this plaque says, always pray to have eyes that see the best in people. It is so easy to see the worst. It is so easy to give kind of uh, exalted advice, to ignore the thing in my eye and concentrate on what's in yours. To respond to somebody who says they're a Christian and then immediately they say, well, you know, I'm not sure you are. You might think about Zacchaeus. Jesus saw him, you know, up in the tree. And everybody hated him. He was a tax collector, all that. And Jesus said, come on down. We're going to have a dinner. Uh, Jesus saw something in Zacchaeus nobody else saw. Now, there are times you have to be careful. You're trying to decide if you should marry somebody. You probably ought not to just look at the good things. You've got to figure out if you really do want to live with this person. You're going to go into business with somebody. Well, you better be sure that that person is somebody you really want to go into business with. But in the normal give and take of life, 
you're not called upon to judge. And, you know, by their fruit you'll know them. You're not even called upon to be a fruit inspector. You're about to make a major purchase. And there, you know there really are not very many big decisions in life. Who to marry, what kind of a job, the house, what are you gonna do with God? Uh, should have been for, but there's not a lot of big decisions. It's all those little ones that trip us up. I hired a guy one time and I decided I should look beyond the outward appearance. He seemed so informed and educated and all of that, so I hired him and one of my board members said, Ross, you better be a little careful about making him executive vice president. And about three months later, I found I couldn't trust him and I had to terminate him. And so we do have to differentiate here because some have responsibilities as an employer and you've got to take care of your company. The government has a responsibility to protect its people and yet as individuals, we're supposed to love everybody. And um, I rented out our house. I, moved, I had this grand idea to move and Sandy will tell you all about that side of it, but we moved and we couldn't sell the other house and so we rented it out. And this guy was, I'm not gonna go into the whole story, but I got to talking to him about the Lord. I told him, let me help you find a church. He talked to his wife about it and his wife said, well, you need to get your act together and then we'll go to church. And I said to him, well, that's backwards. You know, come to church, they'll help you get your, and, and you know that I got so busy trying to help this guy minister to him and pray with him, I, I didn't do a good job of collecting the rent. <laughs> and he still owes me $500. Well, we all have different responsibilities, but we need always to pray, to have eyes, to see the best in people. Your response as an individual Christian is to love your neighbor. And I know the pastor's been working on a message he'd like to share with you. Who is your neighbor? Pray to have eyes and see the best. But the second thing is pray to have a heart that forgives the worst. God forgives any sin. Well, there's one that the Bible says is unforgivable. I can remember when the unforgivable sin was divorce and somebody said, well, in our church, they'll forgive you for murder quicker than for divorce. <laughs> well, the unforgivable sin is rejection of the Holy Spirit. It's rejection of Christ in your life. It's rejection of the gift of God, which is eternal life. The Bible mentions the heart a thousand times, I read. And basically what it's saying is the heart's the spiritual part of us where our emotions and desires dwell. Forgive and forget is the biblical message. Be kind, it says in Ephesians, and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ in God forgave you. I was working at the Washington State Reformatory back in the mid-50s in fact, that's when I was ordained, working in Youth for Christ. And I was going up to this reformatory every Thursday night to conduct a Bible study class. Chaplin and I were good friends. But he ended up, he smoked in a day when it wasn't a health issue, it was kind of a spiritual religious issue for most people. He smoked. Oh, the inmates really had a fit about that. They just didn't like it. And then this chaplain was arrested for putting a, a, a carton of cigarettes in his trench coat pocket, shoplifting in a grocery store. And he was fired and I came, kind of became the interim chaplain for a while. I'm walking through the reformatory one day and a guy walks up to me that knew me and he said, hey, Doug, he said, do you know so-and-so? And yeah. He's up in Vancouver, Canada, yeah. Directs Youth for Christ, yeah. You know him, yeah. Is he a good guy? 
Yeah, he is a good guy. In fact, he was, <laughs> he was the son of a very well-known national evangelist. And he said, well, he's in prison tonight. <laughs> what? Yeah, he got put in prison. And I said, well, I can't, well, it, and it was true. I went home, next day called Channel 5 in Seattle, and sure enough, this guy had been arrested for something, and we'll not go into that. And, um, you know, it, 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 it added a dimension to my Bible teaching that was a problematic, because I had to kind of explain that, uh, well, God forgives the worst, but obviously this guy's off the tracks. Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, that's who he is. And somebody has said the heart is the spiritual part of us where our emotions and desires dwell. Christianity is a matter of the heart. Matthew reads, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what makes a person unclean. My friend, the Youth for Christ director in Vancouver, British Columbia, had a second life and he'd get on his motorcycle and go out and find a girl and you know the rest of the story. The Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Do you remember the day when long hair was our big problem with youth? You know, if our kid would just cut his hair, you know, we'd be so happy with him. Well, today it's tattoos and rings in the nose and we say, boy, would I be glad to go back to the day when it was long hair. Hmm? Well, forgive the worst in people and learn to forgive. We a pastor and I were talking with a pastor the other day over lunch, and he was saying that uh, the first thing people really need to work on is forgiving themselves as well as forgive others. Forgive yourself, forgive the other person, keep short accounts, pray for a heart that forgives the worst. And then, a mind that forgets the bad. Hmm. Forgetting the bad that somebody did to you in a marriage, in a business, in the church. Bible in Isaiah says, I, even I, am he, God, who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. You and I are really good, aren't we? at remembering somebody else's sins. Acts 3, repent, turn back, so that your sins may be wiped out. I think the only real, you know, the, 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 the gospel is so simple that we stumble over its simplicity. But the hard part is acknowledging that I'm a sinner and that I need God's help, that I need his forgiveness for sin. Now, a lot of us, especially the guys, don't like to go to the doctor. We don't like to ask somebody else for care. Somebody said, the doctor says you ought to be using a walker, and we say, you know, and I said to a friend of mine one time, well, fine, don't use the walker, wait until you fall down, and then you'll decide to use a walker. He did, he does. <laughs> you don't like it if you have to wear depends. We don't like to acknowledge our problems. And we sure don't like acknowledge them to God. But we need a heart that forgives and forgets the worst. The psalmist simply prayed, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. I got a letter this week from a guy and he and I had a little disagreement. He wrote some stuff in an, about me that were t totally unfair. And I explained it to him. <laughs> Probably wasn't too smart. But I wrote him a letter the other day, and he wrote one back, and it was like nothing had ever happened. And, and I read the letter, and I took it to Sandy, and I said, can you believe this? And it was like it was all gone. And it was kind of a stormy deal. And uh, I think I have 
other reasons to believe that uh, he'd prayed somewhere along the line a heart that forgives the worst. And then a mind that forgets the bad. It is so hard to forget the bad and let it go. And that's why Jesus said if you think in your heart you'd like to murder somebody, then you're guilty of murder. And then to pray that you have a soul that never loses faith in God. Now what's a soul? Well, it's a car for one thing made by Kia. There's soul food and there is soul music. But George MacDonald, Scottish author and pastor, in fact, I'd been wondering who said this and finally found it was George MacDonald. He says the human soul is the part of a person that is not physical. It is the part of every human being that lasts eternally after the body experiences death. You don't have a soul, you are a soul. You have a body. In other words, personhood is not based on having a body. And he wrote, only two things last, the word of God and the souls of men. You're not a body that happens to have a soul. You're a soul that happens to have a body. I stood beside a casket yesterday for a memorial service. The suddenness, the finality of death is shocking. Suddenly you realize you'll never speak to that person again on this earth. That loved one's not coming back. But you also have to realize that the body is still there. It's the soul that has departed. It's the soul that has departed. Pray that you have a soul that never loses faith in God. Now, there are a lot of reasons people lose faith in God. The first Christian I ever worked for stole money from the, or stole something from the organization. Another Christian left me holding the bag for thousands of dollars of debt incurred on his behalf. We can all find an excuse to blame God Blame the church, leave the church, walk away because of an offense, real or imagined. But we don't follow the church. We don't, should not follow a personality. We're called by God to follow Jesus with our heart, mind, and soul. So pray for a soul that never loses faith in God. Rick Warren, you remember, suggested we should start every morning. God, before I even start this day, I surrender to you. Pray that through the day. Pray the sign through the day. You may not set a certain time or place, but throughout the day, you can pray to have eyes that see the best, a heart that forgives, a mind that forgets, and a soul that never loses faith in God. Even as we pray the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done this morning. Zophar advised Job. He did it with a critical spirit. He did not do it with love. He hadn't prayed that he'd have eyes to see the best in Job. He hadn't prayed about recognizing Job for who he really was and his trust in God. I guess we could conclude that Zophar had not really committed his heart to the Lord. For him, it was something else, perhaps. We're going to sing the song, God Leads Us Along. God does lead us along. That's what it, we're asked to follow Jesus, not invent our own ideas, not come up with our own solutions but rather to pray that we'll see the best in people, a heart that forgives the worst, a mind that forgets the bad, and a soul that never loses faith in God. Heavenly Father, we pray today asking for a clean heart. Give us hearts that care for others. Help us to forgive ourselves and those who may have wronged us. 
Give us strength to forget the bad things and so invade our soul that we may never lose faith in you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Stand and sing with us, please. God leads us along. planned for us. Thanks for being here. God bless. Have a great week and be sure.